Mrs. Magdad and I were at our second to last yard sale one Saturday morning when I spotted this tackle box. Now $35 was about $30 more than I usually spend so I wasn't super interested. I opened the box and the usual hooks and weights were in the top tray. But in the main section were several old looking lure boxes. I peeked in a couple and asked the guy if it would take $30. He said yes, so here we are. Let me pull out the lure boxes and get organized. I did my best to match the lures with their boxes and to identify most of the lures. If you're watching this and you know more about any of these old lures or you see that I have a lure in the wrong box, please let me know in the comments. When I first started going through this stuff, some of the first lures I came across were these and my heart kind of sank. Looks like the previous owner decided to go ahead and add orange paint to the lures. This one has orange paint and a black racing stripe. And I thought to myself, oh man, don't tell me all these have been painted over. I experimentally tried on this lure to get the paint off. The good news is I got the orange paint off. The bad news is I damaged the paint underneath. I mean, you could still fish with this, but I think as far as collector value, uh, I think I'm, I'm lucky. These I don't think these here are that old. Unfortunately, I think this one's wood. The other two are plastic, but it was only these three that were painted. Best I can tell. So I figure I'd get them out of the way early. Now we can look at the good stuff. As far as the boxes go, I think these are my three favorite. And I think I have the matching lures. Check out this one. I go for lucky lures. The best baits in any tackle box. Paw Paw Bait Company, Paw Paw Michigan. There was a number here that didn't help me at all on the internet. There's some handwriting here. I don't know if that was the sporting goods store or if that was the former owner of the tackle box. I think I have the right lure. This here. is the Paul Paul Popper. Like that shape of that mouth, I, I bet it would pop pretty good. This says the Creek Chub Bait Company, CCB Co. There was no number on the box. Again, there's some handwriting. I think this is called a jointed pikey. What I liked about this one, you see that? There there I mean they look like teeth mark to me what do you think you think the fisherman caught something with teeth with that pretty neat this one says there's a South Bend bait for every kind of fish Now these markings did help me. This 973 RH, I'm pretty confident that's what's in here. I don't know the age of this, but it appears to be wood. 
and the way that paint has the cracking in it, I bet it's old. These boxes weren't as attractive to me, but I think I have the matching lures. It says that this head and bait got them. It will get them for you, too, all kinds. Looks like the guy's got a pretty big bass there, huh? Again, there's some writing here. I don't know whose handwriting that is, but I, I went by this, this river runt here. And in the tackle box, I think it was in a different, a different box, but I believe this is a river run. I think it says it on the bottom. It's unfortunate that the paint kind of melted away, but I think, I think that says head and river run. So I'm pretty sure that matches the box. These flatfish boxes have a mark on them. And I was able to hopefully get the right flatfish in the right box here. Boy, there's a lot of hooks on that. That looks like a snag waiting to happen, doesn't it? Now this this color scheme reminds me of the color scheme on the one that was hand painted. Maybe maybe that's what they were trying to match. It's got that same black racing stripe. I don't know. And this here, this is a M2 size. I think that might be a color code. Not positive. They pay a dollar, dollar something, dollar twenty-five maybe. Looks like this fisherman had a thing for orange. Because here's another orange lure. And it's got the same M2 that was on the box. Now as far as I could tell, these three lures did not have matching boxes. This is another flat fish. It's marked T4. At first, I thought this might be another hand painted job because the bottom is totally different and this looks a little sloppy but the T4's looks like it's a factory stamp so I'm not sure and these these red dots look factory so I'm not real sure about that one look at this crazy thing what do you think of that? look at those eyes so this has markings. It says Mill Site Daily Double Floater. And I noticed I noticed one side I think says shallow and one side says deep. The paint's chipping off as I touch it. And you see the hook, the uh, not the hook, the uh, where you where you hook your line is a little bit different. So I guess one side's meant to run shallow, one side deep. But like I said, the paint the paint's coming off as I touch it. This one here, this might be the gem of the tackle box. This took a little doing to figure out what this is. Right? You tie your line here, right? and when it moves through the water, it looks like this would scoop water up and send it through the hole. That is some kind of idea. That must make a commotion in the water, huh? I'm pretty sure this is a Creek Chub Jigger Lure. They made these from 1933, I think, till 1946. I believe I read that these eyes are glass. What do you think of that?
there was a small collection of weedless spoons in the box. I've been able to identify a few of these and a couple I cannot. This one was pretty easy to identify because it's marked. Trixerino 596. Oh, and that one doesn't, doesn't have a weedless feature. At least it doesn't anymore. These two are the same. Little, little ears, I guess, on the side here. Right. And the hook is, the hook is built into the spoon. The spoon is on a hinge kind of deal. So when the fish bites, right, watch, when the fish bites, that, that pushes down pretty easy and then the fish will get caught on the hook. That's pretty ingenious. And then this here is the exact same, but a smaller version. Looks like there, there's a remnants of maybe a rubber tail or something that might have been on these. These again took some digging. P and K Marvelure. They call them the Weedless Wiggler. I think they're from the 40s. That's pretty cool, right? This one here, I, there's no markings in it. It looks pretty generic. It's more of a typical weedless design. This one also has little outriggers with little blades on them, spinner blades. And uh, again, it's got more of a typical, typical weedless design. I think, I don't know if you can read that, it says patent pending. I, I couldn't find out who made this or when. Some more spinner lures. There's another spoon. This one says Johnson's Sprite. I think that's more of a modern lure. This thing here, this head looks like it's made of lead. A lead jig hook big hook on it, feathers, and then a thing that would spin in the water. This is, a, again, more of a modern lure. It's a MEPS spinner. Something you would use for trout. The hook's all rusted out, but I could switch that hook out and fish with that. And this is a, I guess you would say a local favorite. Um, I hope you can read it. This is a Swiss Swing. These are pretty popular uh, in this area, eastern United States, for basically anything that swims trout, smallmouth, largemouth. I definitely have plans to clean this one up and try fishing with it. These blades are brass. That means there might be some flits involved in that one. Now, as far as I could tell, these three boxes don't have matching lures. These two flatfish boxes, this one's marked U20. I believe this one's also marked U20. I don't have any other U20 style flatfish in the tackle box. So as far as I can tell, these two boxes are empty. It's not surprising that you would lose a flatfish in the weeds or in the trees, because look, look at all these hooks on this thing. Now, for all I know, this, this hand-painted one could have gone in one of these boxes, but I'll never know with all that paint on it. But again, look at all those hooks. I would lose that in like five minutes in the stream. And this box, Sure Strike Minnow, Catch the Fish. has a number here, FF60. I'm pretty sure I do not have that lure in the tackle box. I think these three are my favorite. I like these two because of the colorful boxes. I like this one especially because it looks like it's been in battle. Check out those bite marks. Can't get over that. 
and this one just because it's it's just weird Never seen anything like that. So what do you think? Was $30 a good investment? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. These were also in the box. This is a uh, best O luck number 20. Got a level wine feature on it here. Looks like it still works. And then these are modern. Coleman telescoping rod and reel combo. I think it pulls out to about four feet. Simple push button bait casting reel. I guess that could be, be handy for backpacking. This one's the same except it looks like looks like that tip section broke.